and another important member of our community who has in fact become a dear friend to CAMD, a big supporter of CAMD, and a supporter of the needs of people with disabilities is uh, our, our Imam, Dr. Hamid Slimi with Say the Khadija Center and the Faith of Life Network. His bio will be up on the screen there. Uh, he has an extensive bio and I'm not going to take time away from him to go over it, but to say that uh, we hope to work in partnership with Sayyidah Khadija and Imam Salimi in the, in the, in the very new, near future, in fact, to offer a workshop. Uh, lots of our youth have been requesting a sign language workshop, an introduction to sign language. So this is something to look forward to in the spring. Um, we're looking forward to further collaborations on such public education initiatives. Uh, Dr. Slimmy is also a part of our task force on uh, residential services and has opened his, uh, you know, his, his heart and his facility to support us and, and, and help us uh, carry out the initiatives that uh, we need to be uh, facilitating within the community. So let me turn over the rest of this program over to Dr. Slimmy. Thank you. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, alhamdulillah, wa salatu wa salamu ala rasulillah wa ala alihi wa man wala. Rabbi shrah li sadri wa yassir li amri wa ahlul uqdatan min lisani yafqa wa qawli. First and foremost, I thank Sister Rabia Khidr and her team for organizing this event and for inviting me. And also I thank you, all of you who have supported this event and purchased tickets and made the effort to come today. I know many of us or many of you, to be precise, not us, Imams, but many of you are waiting for that Saturday so you can do a lot of things, shopping, laundry, and to give some of your time to this event and come means a lot, definitely to the organizers, to Sister Rabia and her team for their work. This dinner for them means a lot, and you being here, making the effort is the best contribution. It's not only you're conscious of it, but you're willing to do something. And that's why they chose the topic together for a better world. Uh, a couple of years ago, a couple of years ago, I invited Sister Rabia to my television show. And I, she didn't know me back then. And I said, Sister Rabia, I want you to talk on television, on national television, and tell people about what you're doing. She's alhamdulillah famous. She's an excellent speaker, as you can see yourself in here. And she came and explained. And I had some comments. That show specifically had many comments from non-Muslim viewers. And most of the, the viewers are non-Muslim. And they said, that lady is a powerful lady. MashaAllah. I said, I echo you. Allah is using her power to make a difference. And Sister Rabia is involved in other things, not only issues of disability but she's involved in many other things i don't think she would like me to, to to mention them but she's involved in many good things and alhamdulillah uh, we're blessed to have her in this community and specifically in mississauga and in the gta and she's an asset and i say to all the islamic organizations and everyone use her if you can for the good of islam she's a very good woman who really makes us proud when she speaks, when she talks, alhamdulillah. It's a blessing to have you, Sister Rabia, in our community. And it's a, a pleasure to work with you, learn from you, assist you, and support you. And don't worry, tonight you will feel very happy because there will be great support more than ever for CMD, Canadian Association of Muslims with Disability. My brothers and sisters, they ask me to speak about this togetherness for a better world. But uh, rather than going over all the Quran, let me just remind you from some, about some key verses in the Quran. The Quran calls us all to help one another and to help one another in righteous and piety. What is righteous? Allah says in the Quran, al birri wa taqwa, and help one another in righteousness and piety. But help not or do not help one another in sin and rancor. This is very important. This ayah is a key 
This is why we are here, different organizations, different people with different interests, with different backgrounds, coming together, not only to remind ourselves of the issue of disability, and any one of us sitting here, we have some kind of disability. We're, either we're conscious of it, we're not conscious of it. There is disability. None of us has the complete package. All of us are missing something, knowingly or unknowingly. But Allah defines for us righteousness. In the ayah, Surah Al-Baqarah, chapter 2, in verse 177, one of the most powerful verses of the Holy Quran that I always say, share it with your friends. Let people know what Islam is all about. Because when they put Islam, they always show prayer. Prayer is only one of the pillars of Islam. لَيْسَ الْبِرَّ أَن تُوَلُّوا وُجُوهَكُمْ قِبْلَ الْمَشْرِقِ وَالْمَغْرِبِ and because of the time, I will read for you the translation in English. It is not righteousness that you turn your faces towards east or west, but it is righteousness to believe in Allah and the last day and the angels and the book and the messengers to spend, to spend of your substance out of love for him. Out of love, we spend. We have come here, we spend, we purchase tickets and we have come out of love of Allah. And we love for the sake of Allah. For your kin, you start with your kin. For orphans, for the needy. Keep in mind, the needy does not mean needy. This image of fakir is someone who is begging. Needy is anybody who is in need of help. Fakir, Allah says in the Quran to us, Ya ayyuhal nas, antumul fuqara. O mankind, you are the ones who are in need. Wallahu huwa al ghani. And Allah, ghani, it doesn't mean rich. We use it as rich. But ghani means more of independent. None of us is totally independent. We all depend on Allah. We all depend on one another for help and assistance. So the needy encompasses fully the people with disability. For the wayfarer, for those who ask, and for the ransom of slaves, one of the ways of abolishing slavery was to free slaves back then. To be steadfast in prayer and practice regular charity, to fulfill the contracts which you have made, and to be firm and patient in pain or suffering and adversity and throughout all periods of panic. Such are the people of truth, the Allah conscious. So this is basically what we're all about here today. For him. So he said piety is not facing east or west, meaning it's not about just praying. It's about more than that, including what we're doing tonight. So we should feel uh, uh, good about ourselves and should feel good about supporting this cause. What is disability? In Arabic, we use the word i'aqa. And it's, it's very important to see the connection. Insan who is mu'awwaq, disabled, something has hindered him. Something has prevented him from doing. So disability in Arabic is prevention from doing something, an obstacle from doing something. That's the word mu'awwaq. And it's very powerful word, mu'awwaq. It's someone who is challenged, challenged every day with different things. Now, unless we hear personal story like we heard the story of uh, our very esteemed Dr. Ali Khan, her personal story, personal stories do touch us. I'm sure one in your family, one person you know, or a neighbor, you grew up next to them, you remember how challenging was their life. And many of us have seen it. Uh, it's very difficult. And definitely I, I, I echo sister Dr. Ali Khan that the people who are looking after those who are in disability are greatly rewarded. And as, of course, when Rasul Sassam was asked, who are the best people? Man khayrun nas? He said, anfa'uhum lin nas. He said, those of service and benefit for humanity. Who are the best in humanity? He didn't say those who are praying and doing namaz. That's, a, that's something personal for yourself. Those who are of benefit for others. And alhamdulillah, this is what we see here tonight, is people helping people. The Quran stresses the support of those in need. As I mentioned some ayat, not only financially, but in need of support aside from the categories that we always like to repeat, the orphan. A person who's disabled is an orphan too. 
a person who does not have, you know, this ability to do things is a person who is worthy of attention and help. He is a miskin also. We like to focus always on the financial terms of poverty. How a person is in need because he doesn't have money. But a person is in need of help, of assistance. He is a faqir, as I mentioned earlier. Quran and Sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ focus on the necessities and priorities. Human equality and dignity. For us, Islam, karama comes first before even the religious practices. It is given by default that every human being should be given dignity regardless of their faith, regardless of their status, regardless of their background. Allah said it. We have given full dignity for the sons and daughters of Adam and Eve. The Surah number 17, Ayah 17. Also, Islam stresses solidarity and help, as mentioned in the verses we read earlier. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave us a surah in the Quran, which most of you know, Surah Al Ma'un, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala denounced and criticized those who prevent others from helping. And He uh, uh, gave a, um, a parable of their prayer that their prayer that they're making and, and, and is, is leading the prayer that does not relate to the good deed is not a prayer that benefited a person. He links between praying and helping and criticize those who do not help. And remember the Prophet ﷺ was given these verses in Mecca and the help was not restricted to Muslims or the or a specific category of people. You help the orphan, you help the needy, regardless who they are. Islam, I like how the group, the brother uh, who read Surah Al-Fatiha, Ummul Kitab, the mother of the book, the summary of the Quran, I like how they started with Surah Al-Fatiha. And I like the brother who translated mentioned that we read it minimum 17 times a day by multiplying, of course, two, four, four, three, four, the five prayers, minimum 17 times. But we mention, we mention mercy in that surah 68 times. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Alhamdulillah rabbil alameen ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. 17 by four, by uh, 17 by four is 68 times. We are worshiping Allah, repeating the most repeated word by a Muslim and the most repeated quality of Allah is the quality of mercy and compassion. We don't have time to go over the many calls of Allah and the Prophet ﷺ. Dr. Aliya, may Allah bless her, mentioned those who show mercy Allah will show them more mercy. Those who, sh who act like a blessing to others, Allah will increase them in blessings. Those who want more afiyah, sahha, they should help with their afiyah. Those who want more wealth, they should give. Give and it will be given to you. That's the rule in Torah, in Injil, in the Quran. So you show mercy, you'll get mercy. Be merciful to those on earth, including those who need help. That's why in surah number, surah number 80, surah Abasa, we can talk about disability and not mentioning this lesson in the Quran. And I'm sure we have heard this surah many times. But let's focus on one aspect. Allah heavily, heavily criticized Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam on the incident in the aftermath of the incident of uh, uh, Ibn Maktoum's request. Now, any one of us would have acted the same or even worse. I, for one, would have acted worse than the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. I am busy waiting for months to meet these Sanadid Quraysh, these leaders of Quraysh. And they were together sitting in Dar al Nadwa, in the house of conference next to Kaaba. For months he's waiting for them. And the opportunity shows up. And the Prophet goes to talk to them. And guess what? 
this one of my followers, you know, comes and disrupts me, I'll be angry. I for one, I would have failed the test. Prophet Sallallahu is fully focused to give the message. And guess what? Abdullah ibn Umm Maktoum interrupts him in the middle of an important matter. Now all of us agree, you're not supposed to interrupt. But Allah wants to focus our attention forever until the Day of Judgment on this issue of disability. This is the heaviest criticism in the Quran. I mean, if a Prophet Sallallahu wrote the Quran by himself, he wouldn't put that. That would be called a negative point. But he, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, as we read, I read again the translation in English, the Prophet, Allah said, frowned and turned away because there came to him the blind man, interrupting, of course. But what could tell you that, could tell you but that perchance he might grow in spiritual understanding? Meaning, the growth, the spiritual growth, the refreshment that this blind man would get is much higher than all of those leaders of Mecca with all their influence, with all their, you know, uh, power is much higher. Allah wants to give extra attention to the disabled. He didn't talk about interruption. He didn't talk because he wants to tell us and he wanted to make something clear. Yes, Muhammad, you frowned your face. The blind man didn't see you, but I saw you and I want to know and I want the blind man to know that I do not approve of frowning. Very important. This is a, a surah that is powerful, but it shows how important the surah, Surah Abasa, denouncing strongly, and Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam paid attention very much to that. Ibn Maktoum was the second muaddin of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. In Bilal, you adhinu Bilal. Bilal calls the first adhan, so fakul wa shrabu. حتى يؤذن ابن أم مكتوم eat and drink until in Ramadan until ابن أم مكتوم this blind man makes adhan look the power he put him to control the time of course based on the sun uh, the fajr dawn but he put him in that very important time as he's making a point صلى الله عليه وسلم Islam of course accommodates and its laws. We don't have time to go over the laws, but it's very important to acknowledge the fact that the laws of Islam, you know, have been very, very accommodate, accommodating to disabilities. And of course, in consideration of the ability of a person. And that's why uh, it waives many duties for people who are in disability. Prophet said, Allah has raised, has lifted the pen for three. And one of them, of course, and the person who is mentally challenged, person who does not have the mental uh, capacity, person who does not have the intellectual capacity, he is not held responsible for his actions. That's why Allah also in many verses talks about the blind and a person, the lame and people, he said, I blame those who did not want to go with the Prophet Muhammad except those who had excuse. We and I and Allah says, I understand their excuse. I am talking about those other than those who have the excuse. An acknowledgement in more than once in the Quran that the people with disability are exempted from some duties. You may look at it as an exemption. I look at it as acknowledgement and attention to the people with disability that they are part and parcel of society and they are as important as anyone in society. And of course, uh, Allah says, لا يكلف الله نفسا إلا وسعها. Allah does not demand from a person what he cannot afford, what he is not able to do. Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, of course, uh, has instructed many times and Abu Bakr in his famous address, even at war against the enemy, he said, spare the lives of women and children and people with disability. 
Do not fight them. Can you believe this? He is given a clear instruction that these people should not be touched. A consciousness that is in every law and injunction. There is a moral care. There are many aspects of care. But just to touch on this nobility aspect that Allah speaks about, that none of you is noble because of a physical appearance, because of a, a social status. He says a clear golden rule. The most noble or the noblest of you is the one who has the consciousness of God regardless of their physical abilities or financial abilities or privileges, whatever they have. So the rule applies on everything. Islam did not talk too much in the Quran about disabilities because except when it came to injunctions and the issue of responsibility and issue of liability. But other than that, you treat everybody the same. Prophet Sallallahu said, you know how Allah looks at you? Allah does not look at your images, shapes, and your bodies, but He looks at your hearts and deeds. Islam clearly and vehemently condemns, condemns mockery, forbids mockery, contempt, and calling people by names. يَا أَيُّهَا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا لَا يَسْخَرْ قَوْمٌ مِنْ قَوْمٍ عَسَىٰ أَنْ يَكُونُوا خَيْرًا مِنْهُمْ Oh, those, oh, you who believe, let not some mock about others because of a disability, because of something that they have different, because of color of the skin, because of some kind of thing that makes them a minority in a majority. You're not allowed. وَلَا نِسَانُ مِنْ نِسَاء Allah forbids it clearly in many places in the Quran. He also, وَلَا تَنَابَزُوا بِالْأَلْقَابِ Do not use nicknaming. Do not use words. Unfortunately, in some places they use disabilities and use names. Our Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam ordered the companions who carried last names that had some indication that there was a disability in the father or the grandfather, the family lineage. He asked the companions to change their names and not carry that, not to use that as a nickname or a name. There was a, 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 one of the companions, one person said, you came to him. He, was, he had a lot of disabilities. And a man came and started mocking about him. And his name was, this man was Al-Ahnaf bin Qais. Al-Ahnaf bin Qais turned to him and said beautifully, you condemn me for what is beyond my control or for something on which my opinion was not requested. How dare you do such things? How do we condemn these people? In our actions, not necessarily sometimes verbally. A Sahabi, uh, Amr, we have great people and I know we can go over the great companions who had position of power. They had status. They were put by the Prophet ﷺ to lead and they had disabilities. We have also the famous Sahabi Amr ibn Jumah who died in Uhud. How Prophet ﷺ was talking to him about he, he, he had one leg. And he said, Rasul ﷺ said, you are given your life. He died actually in Uhud. He said, I see you walking with your legs in Jannah. You have given with your limited means great things that many could not. These people have sacrificed. When we go to Uhud, we remember these people that the people who really fought to, the, to defend and protect were many of them are, were disabled people. And of course, I would like to add a story that unfortunately the time doesn't help me, but if you remember the story of Julaylib, this man had more than five, six disabilities. And he was a young man. Like any young man wanted to get married. His name was Julaylib. So of course, every time he proposes to any girl, she doesn't even look at him. And he had quite a few disabilities. And the Prophet ﷺ heard of his story and went to him. Knocked the door, said, Julaylib, what's the problem? He said, Rasulullah, you know, I'm a young man. I would like to have to love and be loved. And I would like to get married. The Prophet ﷺ said, Come with me. And the Prophet walked the streets of Medina. 
helping him and checking with families until he found a very nice family. The family refused, but the daughter, he said to her, do you like Julaylib? And she said, Rasulullah, if you like him, I like him. And he married him. And Rasulullah took it upon himself to have this disabled person with something fundamental in life and carried, yes, your Prophet Sallallahu walked the walk and went until this man got married and lived, of course, happily, as they say, ever after. This is very important. It might sound small, but when the Prophet, the commander-in-chief in his time, takes this as a personal issue and helps this man until he gets married, that shows you the greatness of Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. What we need, my brothers, is a respect for those who are in disability. We need, of course, to help them and show help. Thank Allah if Allah blessed you with many good things. But let me ask you tonight. Last year, they had actually a goal to raise some money. And this year, they have a goal. You can make it easy tonight, and you can make it difficult. You can walk like Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa because I'm not here to talk about CMD. Rabi'ah has shown enough slides and she told you, you're educated, what's CMD? CMD is doing what Rasulullah SAW did with Julaylib. CMD is doing what Sahaba, what your great ancestors did, your forefathers. And it's time to refresh our memories with these legacies and lend a hand for help. Thank you very much.